going on guys Jurassic here today we're playing survival fountain of youth this is a demo for an upcoming game basically if you're a fan of the stranded deep series you're going to love this game it has a very similar feel to it it is a survival game so you guys are aware and you can have an option to skip the tutorial and stuff it's actually really cool so we are going to watch it this story is inspired by real events According to historic records, on March 4th, 1513, three ships sailed from Puerto Rico. They were heading to faraway islands and were led by the famous explorer Juan Ponce de Leon. The goal of the expedition was to search for the legendary Fountain of Youth. It all began in Puerto Rico when Governor Juan Ponce de Leon gave military support to Indian Chief Gaibana in the war against other tribes. Spanish soldiers quickly ended the war and restored peace. The grateful chief told Ponce de Leon an ancient legend of his people. A legend about Bimini, a hidden island lost in the sea. According to the legend, in the center of Bimini lies the Fountain of Youth. Anyone who drinks from it will get health and youth for many years ahead. Chief also gave him an ancient map covered with Indian inscriptions. The map showed an undiscovered group of islands. The location to search was clear, but inscriptions were still a mystery to un- the captain took faith in the Indian legend and began to prepare an expedition. The best scientists and sailors have volunteered to join this venture. Three ships, Santiago, Santa Maria, and San Cristobal, sailed off. Ponce de Leon was sure that the ancient map will lead them to the fountain and bring them fame, wealth, and eternal youth. The trip to the islands took almost a month. On the 30th day of the journey, the lookout spotted islands up ahead. The very islands from the map. The expedition was one day away from its goal. for the council. Oh, there's a little note here. Last will and testament. In case I die at the hands of savages or from old age or for any other reason before the miraculous fountain of youth is found, I slide over to the holy church, my property, namely a pair of boots, two shirts, a pair of pants, all undergarments, and the salary owed to me if the expedition is successful. Please consider Captain Ponk de Leon to be the executor of my will. All right, so our goal is to get to the bow of the ship. This is why I sort of said it's like Shannon Deep. It's really cool being able to have this sort of aspect inside the games. So basically, once you spawn in, all you have to do is go up this little ladder here, and get to the very front of the ship. And here we are. There's a little map here on the table for us. I need to go to the captain's cabin. We don't want anybody else to know that we have this map. There's going to be a mutiny. This dude here, he's in charge of it. He just doesn't know it yet. All right, so making it into the captain's cabin. Make sure we shut the door behind us. Boom! He's seen us coming. Take the steel flint, which is going to be found over here on this back little table here. Then you come back over here to this nice little light, and you can light it up so we can see what's actually happening. So we need to check the expedition log, but hold on, there's a note for each here. On the islands we explored, we found numerous traces of the natives' culture. A special practice, interest in strange ornate flasks with unusual water inside. We found two absolutely identical bottles on two different islands. Both were filled with water. Out of curiosity, I drank water from one of the bottles. It was surprisingly fresh and delicious. Within two days, all my old scars began to heal and I started feeling years younger, stronger, and healthier. I cannot stop thinking about this water. Perhaps these flasks are somehow connected to the Fountain of Youth. What if this is living water in that the Guabana told me about? Just in case, I will leave one bottle on my chest. Captain Juan Ponce de Leon. Huh, sounds interesting. Expedition log. 
be found over here on the main table. Lighted entries, May 17th, 1513. The crew of the Santa Maria is on strike again. This time the team did not agree with the captain's decisions to cut their weekly proportion of rum by half. The head of the expedition, Ponce de Leon, had to once again cross from our ship, the Santiago, to the Santa Maria to calm the crew down. May 28th, 1513. Today we landed on another island. There was no fountain of beef there either, but we found a second unusual fast with ancient symbols on it. The fast was delivered aboard the Santiago. It looks exactly like the one we found a week earlier on the another island. Captain Ponce de Leon was interested in these artifacts. May 29th, 1513. At night, one of the expedition ships, the San Crisbal, was ripped off the anchor and carried away by the current. Apparently, the crew underestimated the strength of the new current and did not prepare properly. We pray favorable winds for our comrades so they can catch up to us as soon as possible. June 2nd, 1513. We found another island. It is big enough, so Ponce gave it a name, Island of Hope. On a cursory examination from the ship, the captain noticed an interesting grotto on the island. He ordered the cartographer to sketch it and study it when he was looking around. They decided to schedule a landing for the next morning. In the meantime, we are ordered to move away from the coast so that the missing San Cristobal can see us in case it catches up with us today. Alright, so now we place the map on the stand and we get to study it. We're all fine. I need to freak out yet. Ah, my head. Well, that's not good. Hold on, we must grab the paper. This is the only way we know. So there's a cave we must find for the Fountain of Youth. The rest of our crew is lost. We have to get items from the chest and then we'll be ready to move. Bag of provisions, living water. I feel like the living water is probably going to be very important. Oh, backpack's also important, I'd imagine. Yet yeah, we can only take two items, so I guess the backpack doesn't work as a proper backpack, so... We'll go with the knife and water. So if anything, we can store water in the flask. Water is going to be one of the main things. Good. Well, this is the adventures of Captain Jag. The storm came out of nowhere. None of us were ready for it. Strong winds and giant waves appeared in a split second and slammed the ship. The sails broke apart and the ship slammed into the reefs. The sailors jumped out of their beds and tried to save the ship, but it was too late. I woke up on a sandy shore. I could not remember how I ended up on this beach, but I was alive and full of hope that my friends were somewhere nearby. <coughs> Ugh, that's water. Well, it appears the rest of our crew did not make it out of here. Oh, hold on. My water. You. Let's see. A bottle of water found in youth. When used, it reduces your health penalty imposed by... Oh. Okay, so that's not actually water. So come over here to any palm tree you find. With your knife, smack it in half. And you'll be able to harvest it all. It does do a little bit of damage to our knife, so we are going to have to watch that out. So I come over here to the coconuts. Go into the crafting menu, and you can either make a drinkable coconut, or you can have some for a snack, so we'll make one of each. Cut that in half like a cereal. Come back inside of our inventory, click on it, and eat it up. We do have another green coconut, so let's go ahead and chop this one in half and make two different pieces, just in case. Come on, we were only able to make one. 
All right, so we still need to satisfy our hunger. There's no coconuts on that tree. Let's check the next big one. Okay, so there is a time of day inside this game, so that's pretty cool. Gonna harvest this up like it's so. Come back over here. Boom. Let's make some food. Let's get two pieces this time. Inventory, you and go and eat it up. Place to sleep. Gather some narrow leaves. If you guys are ever curious on what you're supposed to be doing, if you click on J, it has a little excerpt over here and it tells you exactly where you need to be. So this is a very cool little tutorial that they have. So basically all we have to do is go to small palm trees, like a so, boom, and this time it doesn't actually break our tools. It uses our hands. Just rip the leaves down, like a so. You are going to need two different palm trees before you finish your quest. So let's go and grab this and see if we can find a nice place to place a bed. You cannot actually place it on the beach I found, so we'll place it over here next to this tree, and this is about as far as I got. All right, from a bed of leaves, boom. Let's see here. A little bit of shade. Eh, somewhere around here. And then let's go and place all the resources that we have. Boom, let's build this up. Now we have a bed. Sleep six or more hours. All right, so what is this? What about the way you sleep? Energy is restored faster than status appears when food and water are more than 60, as well as well sleeping. Chance of treating all maladies plus 35%. Health is restored while sleeping. Oh, that's interesting. All right, so let's just sleep for eight hours. We're outside. It's a little scary at night, but you know what? Less sun beating down on us, so we're good. We had a little bit of shade, a little smoke signal. So we can build and light up a smoke signal using yellow leaves. I saw several of those on the beach where I woke up after the shipwreck. Okay, so you're looking for the dried out palm fronds. Nice. He's just like so. Oh, there's a crab. Man, that dude is fast. How on earth are we supposed to sneak up on one of these? There we go, smoke signal. All right, so we need to have some sticks also. Hey there, little buddy. That's a cool looking turtle. So where do we find sticks at then? Right here? Nice! All right, so we got us a brand new blueprint. So head over to the crafting tab and there's going to be like a general area and we can just scroll down here and it's going to be the smoke signal. I feel like we should probably have this towards the beach somewhere like around here. Eh, seems fine. All right, so we need one more stick and we need one more dried out leaf. So let's go and grab this up real quick. Took us an hour, but we built it. We need to find a stone. So I did not find any next to the white rocks, but I should find one on the beach. So there we go. Now we got it so we can make a stone cutter, which we brought a knife anyways, but I'm sure this is just to make sure we're actually able to survive on the island or we could build a stone ax. Quest calls for a stone cutter, so that's what we'll do. I'm the survivors. Finding shelter for the night would be a good start. I took a sketch from the ship, and there is a suitable grotto here. All right, so on the beach, there's going to be some sort of rib cages, a whole bunch of palm trees, and a cave. All right, hold on, we're running in the wrong direction. So where we wake up, we're right next to the giant rock with like a flat thing on the top. So I believe it's this other mountain over here. So like, as soon as you wake up to the right. <laughs> what is that? Short-eared dog. All right, buddy. All right, well, there's definitely things to eat you in this world. So as soon as you wake up, take a right down the beach, you'll eventually come into this little skeleton. And if you look over to your left, there's the cave. And it's also right connected to the gigantic peak with the flat top. So that's how you can find this cave easily. It looks like there are going to be some short eared dogs around in the area. So be careful. Scorpions. I don't trust scorpions. Check the map on the wall. Looks like we got some rope. All 
right, so there's the cave over here. On this map, Ponche de Hilo marked the approximate location of the two water sources, the coastal grotto and the small island where he lost his spyglass. The caption says that the spyglass remained in the place where fireflies are visible and the location of the island of Hoop. All right, so we're here. Looks like we just follow the beach all the way across. It'll sort of take us directly over to the next island that we need to go to. Because we woke up roughly around in this area here. Looks like there's going to be some wolves and stuff over in this direction. So over towards the beach, it should be safe. Our captain, Juan Ponce de Leon, also survived the shipwreck. Sea currents brought him to this same island just a bit earlier before my awakening. He located the grotto and made it his temporary shelter. Then he started to act quickly and decisively. After building up the temporary camp, the captain began to explore the island. He named it the Island of Hope. During his trip to the small nearby island, he heard distant cannon shots. It was a signal from one of our ships. The captain left a note, then hurriedly packed and sailed towards the sound of the gunshots. He was in a hurry to help his team. In this hurry, he forgot his spyglass on the small island. It can be quite useful to me. Anyone who reads this, I am one Ponche de Lo. Head of the expedition studying these islands. I barely survived the shipwreck and arrived here on a lifeboat. I'm leaving this note in case someone on my crew also survived. I spent a few days investigating the island and even a rough map in my notes about the island here. I spent a few days investigating this island and am leaving a rough map and my notes about the island here in this grotto. The island is uninhabited, but it is full of wild birds and animals, so be careful. I found ruins and other traces of ancient civilizations. This morning I was exploring the small island in the bay to the east and heard a distant cannon fire. This must be a signal from one of our ships. Sounds like it's close enough to my island. My rescue boat is still intact, so I will go there immediately to find survivors. Yes, just before sailing, I noticed that I forgot my spy glasses at the place where I heard the cannon fire. You can look for it. It's in a conspicuous place with many fireflies. If you find it, I recommend that you take a good look around. In the clear weather before you go after me, the ancient observatory at the top of the mountain would be the perfect place to do this. It is easy to find, and the white symbol above it is very visible from almost everywhere. I'm leaving this bottle of living water here so that the person who finds it can restore their health if they're shipwreck. Good luck to you, friend. Oh man, that's the item I brought with me. Oh, gum. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know if you guys want to see more of this game. <laughs>